But when I experience the Holy Spirit transforming me, prayer becomes a joy. I've gone to prayer meeting that I wish it's shorter, but now I can pray for hours. I can pray for hours. It's true. If 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 I don't have to go home tonight, I can even pray here overnight. I can pray here. If you like to stay with me, of course I won't. I, I promise I'll <laughs> finish here at uh, seven thirty. But I that I love praying because I experience His love all the time. Oh. Do you enjoy God? Enjoy prayer? Yeah. It's a habit you want to develop, and the stronger it is, the stronger God will stay in your life. So God will never forget you. And when I pray, I always say, yes, God, remember me right now. God is with me right now. God is happy. God is smiling. God is excited, shouting with joy. That's what the Bible says. <coughs> Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. And God, even a mother, would not have no compassion on a child would never lose their compassion. And God always has the compassion on you. God always has a plan for you, even after we fail Him so many times. He still has a plan, and He has compassion for you. Do you want to take that compassion? And say, Lord, yes, I want your compassion. Make my life better, starting today. You want that? Amen. If you want that, it's yours. Amen. It's all planned for you, as Martin Luther said. If the king gives you a castle, the castle is there even if you don't take it. So the castle is right there. God's blessing is standing right there. And you never imagine how big it is. And I know how big it is. How big the blessing of God is for me. Because if I can bless one person, that is a big blessing for me. When I see one person enter heaven. That is the, already the greatest reward I can have. But I'm going to see more and more people go into heaven. And I'm going to see more and more people transformed by the power of God. And God is going to give me extra blessings and reward in heaven. Actually, for me, I don't think of the reward, but I know God will give that to me. And God will give that to you. And your life will be full of blessings, even when we fail Him. But if you say, Lord, I want that, then God's plan will come true in your life. And God has compassion. Can you say to the next person? person next to you, God has great compassion for you. God has great compassion for you. God has great compassion. Hey, Anthony. God has great compassion for you. And even if your mother may forget you, but God will never forget you. And God will always remember His plan for you. And then God says in verse 16, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Now you have seen people with tattoo, right? Oh, yeah. Names of lovers. But one day they, they fall out of love and they say, what can I do with this name? <laughs> <laughs> but God never regrets that. He has your name on his palm that he really loves you. That he really remembers you. That your name is up in heaven. That you may say, well, there's so many people. How can God remember me one person <coughs> and a person who fail him? But God has the capability because he's God. That he can remember each one of you by name. I cannot, you know. <laughs> I forget many names. But God remember you. God remember your name. Okay, let us look at uh, Zephaniah 3.17. This is a very wonderful Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Uh, actually, it's um, about the fourth book before the New Testament. About Zephaniah. Yeah, the fourth book before Matthew. If you just turn before Matthew, it's a very thin book. That the minor prophets, chapter 3, verse 16. Now, it's easy to remember because John 3, 16, you remember, right? Mm -hmm. And this is 3, 16 plus 1. Zephaniah 3, 17. I really love this verse. I really like it. Okay? If you find it, can you read it with me? The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love, 
He will rejoice over you with singing. You know, God is mighty. He is powerful to save. He can save us from all kinds of sins, all kinds of disasters, all kinds of problems, all kinds of people, prob problematic people. And then he talks about his pleasure for us. He takes great delight in you. He will take great delight in you. Can you say someone's name will really take great delight in you? How many people in the world really take great delight in you and say, I really like you? How many people in the world would say that to you? <laughs> I guess most, most people don't have many people who really take great delight in us. Yeah, you, can you think of someone? Um, one of my sisters. Yeah, your sister. That's fortunate that you have a good family, that your sisters have great delight in you. That some people say, I just don't have anyone. But God takes great delight in you. Some people say, well, God is so far away, I don't feel the love, I don't see him, so what does his great delight do to me? Sometimes we might say that. But God is the one who's in control of everything. So if God takes great delight in you, he will for sure bless you. He will for sure give you the best. And He wants your life to blossom. Especially in this last days. You see so many disasters, all the things happening. And you know, Jesus is coming back soon. I just saw in the news that, uh, that the Chinese government announced that in the next 20 years, China will experience many major earthquakes. They study the earth, uh, the, you know, the... Uh, the land and they say, well, we're going to experience more earthquakes. But they only say in the next 20 years. They say, so for the next 20 years and then after that there won't, I mean, they didn't say that. They didn't say after 20 years there won't be any more earthquakes. But they just stopped there. But actually it's going to have more and more earthquakes <coughs> because that's the sign of the end of the world. And God wants more soldiers of Him filled with the love of God. Without the love of God we can do nothing. So we need the love of God fill our heart to transform us so that we can bless other people. And first you must have the love of God before you can bless other people. Without the love of God, you say, oh, it's so hard, so many people reject me. People reject me all the time. But I don't mind. Because I like God so much and I want to glorify God. Because on the judgment day, people will be judged in front of God. Mm. And then God said, a Christian has witnessed to you, but you have not accepted my Savior, my salvation, my love. And so it, it will glorify God if Christians witness to people more and more. So even when people reject God, I rejoice for God because I have glorified Him. But if the person believes in Jesus, that's far better. But when people don't believe, I don't feel good, I feel bad. But I still we feel happy for God that I have witnessed to the person. So, I, so that way, when I witness to people, I don't feel overwhelmingly bad that I'm wasting my time. I don't feel that way. I feel I'm glorifying God every moment I talk to people. And I find that many people want to talk, although they don't want to believe. <laughs> they want to talk. Some people don't want to talk, but there are always some people who want to talk. And so what I say to the person will be a witness for or against a person on the day of judgment. I hope it will be for him, that it will help him. So I take great delight that God takes great delight in us and he wants to use us to have the love of God.